Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, John, how you doing? Good, Art. Good to see you again. Um, recently, we, I was talking to a friend about buying a new car. Oh. And uh, the question came up, of course, he's retired like uh, we are. Uh, and the, how long are you going to be retired for? And how long is the car going to last? Mm. So the bait he was having with himself was buying a new car or a used car. And um, we bought, when Penny was quitting work, she bought, went out and bought a new car that was going to be the last car she'd ever buy. Right. And I know that's not true. <laughs> you know, cars, cars don't last 30 years like they once did. Uh, when I was a, a teenager, I, there were a lot of people driving 20-year-old cars. Yeah. Um, and now, boy, a 10-year-old car is, you know, it's junk. It's junk. So the real question, and I know you're a used car. Well, not only uh, that, but I actually am currently uh, uh, looking to buy a car to replace a vehicle that I have. And I like to keep them for a long time. And um, uh, But I'm at that point, and kind of interesting what you said about, you know, when people are retired. Now, we're, not, we're actually working, but our, our car usage is probably a lot less right. than it used to be not just because of the pandemic, but because it's just less because we're not, let's say, traveling to locations all the time. You and well, I, we're, you we're, and, it, it, if nothing else, you're not commuting to work. Well, that's number one. But even you yeah. and I, we used to run out all the time and load up our cars and, and go sure. to uh, shoots. And now we're doing them all remotely, uh, yeah. which actually turns out to be a blessing in disguise because uh, it gives us the opportunity to speak to people on the East Coast and uh, uh, four or five hundred mile distant uh, uh, people, right. and really interesting people that we probably at this point in our development wouldn't get to do. But having said right. all that, uh, we still want something that's reliable. And I've never, ever, I think I once in all the years have bought a new car. And I guess it's part of the psychology is that you drive it off the lot and you lose, you know, 20, 30 percent of the right. value. Yeah. Uh, so I've always bought um, uh, cars that were generally uh, had one uh, user. And um, how many years do you like? A, you, you like a used car that's no more than what? Two years old, five years well, old, actually, 10 years old? I've actually uh, changed my opinion. I, I used to look for something that might have been up to four or five years because then you could get a, a more luxury version uh, yeah. for, uh, for a decent price. But um, uh, I, uh, uh, and the last car I bought, I bought off a, a, it was an ex lease car from a, uh, a dealership that we had recently bought a new car, I think for Linda and my uh, son had bought a car uh, from them just recently. It was a friends and family kind of thing. So you got a deal. So we yeah. got a deal. But so now I don't know anybody. And uh, you see, uh, I was really intrigued by this uh, caravan. Uh, where oh, yeah. they say they have a, a vending machine. Of course, they don't have them in California. And right. it, it's a nice gimmick, but really what they do is they, they bring it to the house, they let you drive it around, and then they'll take the, your other car and trade. And it's really nice. Everything's done uh, very conveniently for sure. you. And there are three or four services like that. Are the prices decent? So uh, I have found that they're really higher than uh, the place that I... There are two places that I think uh, I'm looking at seriously. Uh, there are uh, the rental car companies that take pretty good yeah. care of their cars, and, and you can go you can go directly to them and buy a, a used car just coming off the rental service that have maybe nineteen to twenty five thousand miles, which is much lower than I would normally think of. Under forty thousand miles is sort of where I would look yeah. to get something because I was always interested in getting an extended warranty. A factory right. warranty, and then they, sure. which means it has to be certified pre-owned. Well, all, yeah. all their cars uh, are certified pre-owned, and you get the the standard factory warranty, and then they have additional warranties. I'm not interested in these private company warranties because who knows if they'll uh, be in business. But the manufacturer's warranty is what I'm interested right. in. So I found, quite frankly, uh, that the two major uh, uh, companies. Uh, are Avis and Enterprise, and Enterprise prices and Avis prices are comparable, but 
generally speaking, Avis for the same model car uh, yeah. is about the same price for a 2020 as um, Enterprises for 2019. And they're comparably equipped. Uh, so it looks like those are the kind of winners. And then I'm also certain. And is the, is the mileage about the same? Uh, for the, the, they vary. The, the Enterprise 2019 mileage be about the same as the Avis 2020 car? Yeah, I would say that they're probably in the uh, 25 to 35,000 mile range. And yeah. so the, the 2019s will generally have more mileage, uh, which means that they probably kept it in the fleet longer. Uh, and yeah. that's probably uh, what uh, part of the uh, the business plan of uh, Enterprise. Uh, but Avis, um, they just have the, uh, I guess they just turn them over and they have a formula. 20,000 miles, move it out. Right. They, don't, yeah. they don't even have any 2019s left over. He says he can't remember the last time he had one. <laughs> okay. And Enterprise has primarily 2019s and a few 2020s which are about $1,000 more. However, uh, I think uh, Enterprise gives you a better price on the trade-in. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I haven't spoken to Avis about that yet. And I've also called some local dealers. Um, and Hertz, Hertz is not uh, in the mix? They're, they're history. They're, uh, really? They, they're, they're bankrupt. Uh, and no they, kidding. Yeah, they only have... Uh, <laughs> when's, the last time you, when's the last time you rented a Hertz, your favorite? Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, actually, Avis, I think, brought up, uh, Avis or Enterprise brought up most of the other uh, uh, rental companies, so they really are umbrellas yeah. for everybody else. You know, there is there is great wisdom in buying a used car, whether you're retired or not. Um, and that is that, uh, now this is particularly true, I think it's every five years. Detroit, about roughly every five years, Detroit comes up with what I think they call a new platform. Right. So um, uh, let's say it's the Impala. Uh, every five years, they come up with, they change it significantly. Uh, they still call the Impala, but they, uh, they really go to a, a lot of trouble to change the chassis and the, maybe the engine, and they make major improvements. And then for five years after that, they'll change the headlights, you know, the shape of the headlights, right. or they'll change the color offering, or maybe they'll change something relatively insignificant. But it's the same, the same essential machine right. that was premiered, you know, Correct. five years ago. So when they change platforms, and and I don't know, I don't follow it anymore. But when they do change that platform, that's the year you don't want to buy, mm. Bec because because they haven't the figured it all right. out. Right. Yeah, they haven't figured it all out. Right. So what you want to do is you want to wait a year and see how that first year was. Maybe you want to buy a used car from that first year, or maybe you just want to buy a new car the second year when they figured it all out and it, they've made the changes and all the upgrades and all the fixes. Or maybe you want to wait the third year of the platform and buy a used car right. and get get all the problems having been worked out and get a reduction in price. Yep. And so um, that's why I used to look for like a uh, four or five year old car. And also I've always, uh, uh, every other year I uh, join Consumer Reports to get all the, <laughs> the car facts. Sure. And then, then I drop out for a year or two and then I, I come back in. I happen to be in my in period right now. And okay, so you're really car knowledgeable now. Yeah, so I've, uh, well, as far as Consumer Reports goes, uh, but you know how they lie. So yeah. I've actually found them to be pretty reliable. The last car I bought, I bought strictly because of uh, Consumer Reports, and I would only take that particular model. Uh, yeah. I was willing to spend a little bit more uh, than I am now, but I don't have as much need. Uh, you know, I don't put on 7,500,000 miles a year anymore. Uh, well, <laughs> right now we're lucky if we do, you know, uh, uh, 300 miles a month. Uh, yeah. You know, gotta... Well, you know, there, there's, uh, and, and speaking of buying cars, there's a, a couple of tricks that people don't pay attention to. One is that really large organizations have um, some kind of a discount program. Right. For instance, AAA. We're, we've been AAA members for a long but time. But you're talking buying new. I'm um, new car. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a Costco member, and I probably would do that with Costco. And Costco does the same thing. So they they send you to the what they do is they send you to the fleet sales office. Right. So if you want to buy a Chevy, 
you'll go to your you'll get your Costco number or your AAA discount number, and you'll they'll give you somebody specific to call. You'll call up. It turns out it's the fleet sales manager uh, for whatever brand you want, and right. it's a local uh, local dealer. And those are those are very good deals. That's a good way to buy a new car. But the used cars, we've uh, in the past we've gone to the auction, mm. to the car auction, and I think most people know this, that used cars are a much higher profit margin than new cars. Sure. And so all the new car companies, you dealer, the Chevy dealer, the Dodge dealer, they all have used cars in their lot. Mm. They're making more money off those used cars. And it, they're usually, they're not necessarily the same make and model, the same make, but they usually are. And so they can certify them for you. And they can guarantee, give you some kind of a warranty or on a used car, which you can't get at a, you know, Jimmy's used cars on Main Street. Oh, you 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 used to shop at Jimmy's as well, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, I just, I just want to add a few, a few things. So what I've also found recently that, uh, um, and quite frankly, now I won't buy a car without them having a Carfax, which is free. Okay, they all have it listed That's there good. and you can go take a look at it. Uh, yeah. And I actually returned down one car because it had two owners. It was from um, uh, Enterprise, and it actually had a previous owner. Uh, in other words, it, I guess it was sold, and they must have taken it as a trade-in. Uh, 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 and yeah. it, it was it was the model I wanted, but because it had additional um, owners, and one of them was out of state, and all sorts of things like that. Yeah. So, uh, in any event, th there are a lot of tools if you're a little bit patient. And if you're willing to have them hound you, uh, got to do your research. Yeah, uh, but got to do the research. So anyway, yeah. I'm feeling pretty good about. It. And over the next, uh, unfortunately, we, I don't need a, I don't need the car. Uh, right. We have two cars uh, sitting in the driveway, and Linda's hardly out at all right now. So I mean, it's not an issue of even if I got rid of one. But I know I'm going to get more money for my my current car if I do use it as a trade-in. Uh, yeah. And uh, by the way, uh, most of these uh, pricing for the two, three-year-old cards, it's all Kelly Blue Book. It's all in that area. Yeah. Uh, or just below Kelly Blue Book. Yeah, it's not hard to find out the, the best prices. Right. So in any yeah. event, uh, what I'd always be in, really be interested in, uh, uh, although I may have made my decision by then, is uh, any of our listeners uh, uh, who have recently bought a car, um, whether they leased it or bought it or what their thoughts are. And everybody, yeah. the situation is different. We actually know some people now, even in the COVID-19 world, who are actually traveling more. Uh, they're being very careful where they stay, but they're going to uh, uh, parks and things like that, which they didn't do before, because it's either that or be sequestered at home. Uh, that's not for me right now, but... What, what, how did that relate to cars? I got lost well, there. Well, because uh, the, you would want a more reliable car if you're going to be doing some substantial uh, driving. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. That that went over my head. Sorry. Okay. Anyway. I'll, I'll have a cup of coffee, wake up, and, and figure out well, what yeah, you're talking about. Actually, uh, we're not going to get into the reason why, but you've been actually up for hours actually doing manual labor uh, on your, your South 40. That's right. Manual does all the labor on our ranch. Yeah. <laughs> But, so but I, you, I, you had to be you had to be there to supervise. Yeah, I like uh, I like your uh, request for people to uh, email us and let us know about their tips and tricks for buying a car and whether they buy a news car, a new car or a used car. Um, how many people? Here's a question: How many people in the retired realm, uh, not working full time, lease a car? Mm -hmm. And what's the advantage if you're not working to leasing a car? I, I don't think there is one, but I'd like to hear from somebody who can tell me, you know, if you if you can't write it off as a business right. uh, expense, why would you bother as a retired person, let's say, why would you bother leasing a car? Hmm. Yeah, good point. So anyway, listen, we'll all see you soon. Yeah. Uh, and uh, look for us on Celebrating Act Two, both the website and on YouTube. Right. And if you go to the YouTube site, please subscribe so that it will make us feel like we're wanted or not wanted. That's not good. Like we're uh, needed. Needed. Maybe we're needed. cared about. <laughs> anyway, see you, John. See you soon.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.